Hey, this is Mike with Family Handyman, and today we're going to be installing a TV on this wall. We're gonna be installing it between two floating shelves and disguising it with some sliding doors. When we're done, you'll be able to essentially put away your TV just like you do your phones and your tablets, removing the distraction of the room. Then we're going to motorize it so you can do everything with a push of a button. Let's get started. I'm starting by adding a support arm to the end of the cleat. This will support the top of the shelves at the ends. Then I'm attaching the cleat to the wall with screws. Since the wall is more than eight feet, I have to add a second length to span the wall. Then to add the support arms to hold the shelf up, I'm starting in the middle with a spacer and adding arms to either side of that using glue and nails. I'm adding spacers and arms out from the center until I reach both of the ends. Now I'm installing the pocket door track to the front of the arms. I'm pre-drilling holes to line up with the arms, then I can screw it to the arms from below. With both tracks installed, I need to fasten a nailer right behind them. This will give me something to nail the bottom of the shelf to later on. Then I'll add more support arms to cap the ends of the tracks. I'm pre-drilling and screwing the door brackets to the top sides of the doors. Then I put the wheels inside the track so I can hang the doors on them. After assembling the motor and attaching it to a mounting block, I'm fastening it to one of the support arms, about a foot away from the end of the track. For the pulley system, I'm screwing a pulley on the shelf arms at each end of the track. I'm positioning two more pulleys, one on either side of the motor, and these are screwed to the nailer right behind the track. These two pulleys create tension on the belt when the drive wheel turns. To route the belt, I'm using glue and a clamp to attach one end of the belt to one of the posts on the first door. Then I route the belt through the pulleys and the drive wheel, and I'm clamping the opposite end to a post on the second door. I'm doing the same thing with the second belt, but I only have to go around one pulley. I'm not gluing together one end on each belt, just in case I need to go back and adjust the tension after the motor's running. The transmitter I'm using has two channels. One makes the motor spin clockwise, the other counterclockwise. These connections are really easy to make, and I'm just using the wiring diagram that comes with the transmitter. So I've made my connections to the transmitter and the motor, hooked it up to power, and I just want to see that the connections are made correctly and that the belt is tensioned right. So here's the moment of truth. It works great. Um, now I have to clean up the wiring, add some limit switches in there, and then seal off the shelf. I'm positioning two limit switches inside the track so that when the wheel reaches the closed position, it'll hit the limit switch and turn off the power. And same for when the wheel reaches the open position. Now I'm enclosing the shelves with half inch birch plywood on the top and bottom. For the bottom piece, I'm cutting out a large notch to fit the pulley system. I'm using 3 quarter inch thick birch hardwood to cover the front of the shelf. To balance the wall out, I'm adding an identical floating shelf right below the doors. I'm dressing these doors up with some framed artwork. To build up the frame, I'm using simple pocket hole joinery. With the frames together, I'm cutting a rabbit on the back of the frames then chiseling out the corners to fit the glass and the artwork. Then I'm adding keyhole hardware to mount them to the doors once they're painted. So I've got everything put together. I've added my artwork to the frames and hung them onto the doors. And now I can put away or hide my TV whenever I want with just a push of a button. For more projects like this, head to FamilyHandyman.com.